body needs power. You know, we need power in all kinds of situations and circumstances. And sometimes you just feel weak and you think, I don't know what to do. This problem is just overwhelming me. And of course, that's why we have a wonderful prayer line because we like for you to call. But let me tell you, we do have power. We have power in the Word of God, but it's not going to be released unless we speak it. So for many, many years, I have spoken the promise to the problem because a lot of people, Christians, they just speak problem, problem, problem. I have this problem. I have this problem. I have this problem. But that doesn't change it. But if we speak what God's promise says to the problem, the word can't return void. And it does something to you as you're just speaking it. You know, the Bible says that. Don't just look at the mountain. Don't just talk about the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Why does God tell you to speak to the mountain? Because there's something so good on the other side of it and you don't want to miss it. So I want to tell you what I do. I have certain, actually I have 34 or five on my phone. And Sarah, this is a good thing because when I travel, when I get up in the morning, I can speak the promises. Now, some mornings I wake up and think, duh, you know, I'm facing all these things today, but I speak those promises first thing. I fix coffee, speak promises. And folks, some way those promises work all day long with the problems, the power of God's word. And so we want you to get the promises. Mm, we really do. You can download them. What can they do to get right. these promises? Get on the phone, call, or download. I think the download is totally great because right. on a download, you can keep it on your phone, put it on your tablet, whatever, and that's really convenient, very, very portable. But you know, Mom, I was thinking about this because I remember when I was growing up, um, remember I had field day. Yes, I did. And uh, field day for me was always yucky. I yeah. hated field day. It was discouraging, depressing, because right. I was the slowest. I couldn't jump very high. I didn't throw very far. And I I was always like, you know, in the turtle group. <laughs> and it was just really, and at that time, it, it, you didn't always win a prize, you know. In, in the world that we live in now, everybody gets a prize. So participation, you know, they acknowledge right. you've participated. Way to go. That's awesome. But back then, you did, if you didn't, like, get first, second, or third, you didn't get anything. You, you know, you're kind of a loser. And because I was the slowest in my class, I was, like, I was in this turtle group, and then I was, like, number four or five even within the turtle group. So I never won anything, and it was always embarrassing and discouraging and depressing. And you know, year after year, it'd come around in May and I'm like, ugh, it's field day again, Ugh. And I remember hating it, hating it, hating it, hating it, loathing and dreading. So I remember like in fifth grade, you said to me, you know, we don't have to keep doing the same thing. You do the same thing and want different results, that's kind of crazy. So if you want different results, you have to do something different, okay. And I remember you said, well, let's start to confess the word. And I was like, confess the word, confess the word, meh, you know. But I thought, well, you got nothing to lose. You've had, you know, fifth place for the last four years. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've been a loser all along, so it's only up from here. So I remember, I think it was like two weeks before, we started saying Bible verses. I'm the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has created me to be victorious, more than a conqueror. And saying it wasn't like this long, long list, but you know, it was three or five verses, key verses, that would speak to winning and doing well and, and, and being successful. And that year, in the preceding years, I always got last place or, you know, second to the last on everything. High jump, long jump, you know, 50-yard dash. Everything was last place or second to last. That particular year, everything I won, either first, second, I don't think I, I might have gotten one third, but everything else, I was first or second in, in all of it. Like the 50-yard dash, the throwing thing, the long jump, the high jump, and, and it made really made a dramatic influence in my life thinking, whoa, and a kind of a light went on. Oh my goodness. And so from that point on, you know, your own experiences convince you, convict you uh, of what's possible. So I just encourage you. I remember having that experience when I was in fifth grade, you know, fifth grade, you're around 10, 11 years old. So that experience has really marked me all along in my life and really put into, into my priorities, the importance of speaking God's word. 
And so now, every day we're driving to school, we have like a group of little verses that I confess over the kids, and they can probably say them on their own because we do it every single day, and it's extremely powerful. So I just encourage you, get on the phone, get on the website, download these confessions, and, and there's a whole boatload of them, but, and you say, well, I, don't, I can't do them all. Well, pick three, pick five, pick kind of your top priorities, and, and at least start. At least start because, mom, we do. We we talk about problems. We talk we about do. diabetes. We talk about health issues. We talk about family issues, divorce, conflict with the mates. You know, problems at work, problems at school. You know, this teacher doesn't like me. I remember saying that. That teacher doesn't like me. And I remember you'd always say, you know, you're surrounded with favor like a shield. And, oh right, that's what the Bible says. And so, those were really important things and really changed changed the circumstances. And I have found you can speak the word to your mate. Maybe your mate is out of it with you or they're not a Christian and it's a hard living situation. But there are promises we've put together that have to do with relationships. And you could just go through and mark the ones, you know, that have to do with your relationship with a mate. And that's so important because we tend to say the negative things. And that is bad news. It doesn't change it, but the Word has power, but it has to be spoken. We have all these promises, but we must speak them to the problem. So if you haven't called in, you haven't gotten on the website, please do it right now. And as I said, and I like what you said, you know, you don't have to speak all of them. Speak the ones that apply to you. These are promises Sarah and I have used and seen magnificent, magnificent, supernatural results. And who's sitting out there and want, does not want to see supernatural results? Who's sitting out there, a born again Christian, and shouldn't expect supernatural results? You know, people will say to me, how do you have all this energy at your age? And I tell them, and they don't believe me, it's the Word. You know, Proverbs 4, the verse you like so well, it says it's life to all your flesh. I get up in the morning and say, wow, I have energy for today. I have life to my brain. Folks, and people, and people say to me, well, how do you do it? I said, it's the Word. The Word has the power. Mm -hmm. And you know, I like what it says in Isaiah 55, 11. It says, so will my Word be that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. That's what God says about His Word. And so I just challenge you, get on the phone, get on the website, download these confessions. And again, um, you can ha ha get your kids to encourage your kids to make these declarations on a daily basis. And I think sometimes, Mom, we also have the idea that this is an instant microwave solution. Right. You know, I mean, I love microwave popcorn. You push the button that says popcorn and, you know, three minutes later, bing, you have popcorn. But I remember growing up, that's not how dad made popcorn. When dad made popcorn, he had, remember that, what, some kind of big skillet thingy and he would put the butter in the bottom right. and we'd get the popcorn and he would, you know, fill just one, one layer and then he'd stand there, put the lid on it and Shake turn it, it up on high and he'd keep shaking it and shaking it. I mean, this was a little bit of a process, you know, and he would do, you know, how many, you know, multiple bowls of this stuff and he'd just keep going and keep going. It took some time. It took some time to grow and to develop and to, you know, marinate and get better. And I would say the same with God's Word sometimes. I think we want this, you know, plug and play, bing, solution, instantaneous. And I don't think we always appreciate that sometimes this is a process and there's a journey. And one of the things I like about speaking the Word of God, not only do we say it, but it also starts to change us as well. I think we want to change circumstances and sometimes I think God wants to change us. And the change doesn't happen to the circumstance until we change on the inside. So when we begin to speak what God says, a lot of times those things start developing internal change. And let's not quit. Let's not get weary in well-doing. Let's right. not give up. I don't, it's not working, you know, three days and then move on to the next excitement thing. No, this is more of a lifestyle. And I know with my kids, um, I've been saying these verses, oh my goodness, mom, it's got to be at least five continuous years. 
Um, and that's magnificent. Now they can say them and everything, but I just think they're just super essential that we create, not just like try it and see if it works, but really say, okay, I'm committed. I'm committed to following the Word of God. I'm committed to speaking the Word of God and saying what God says. And one of the verses that I love, and it, it, when you said Proverbs 4, it r triggered my memory. I love this verse. It's Proverbs 2, verse 2. And it says, make your ear attentive to wisdom and incline your heart to understanding. And that's one of the verses I've been praying over my kids and saying every day, I thank you, Father, that you make the ears of Isabel, David, Benji, Reese, and me attentive to wisdom and incline the hearts of Isabel, David, Benji, Reese, and me to wisdom and understanding. And, and I say that's one of the ones in the list that I really say on a consistent basis. And so I don't expect my kids or Reese or me to act foolish or stupid or obtuse because this verse here has life and, and energy and effectiveness to it. And the word has energy. It begins to change you. I know there's one verse that's at the very end of mine. It says, to speak evil of no one to be patient and gentle and show all humility to all men. Now, you know, sometimes I get up in the morning and I have some crises to deal with. And going overseas, <laughs> you can have international problems. And so, you know, I want to blast people. I want to complain. Oh, this person's so hard to work with. But I've said that scripture, to speak evil of no one, to be patient and gentle and show all humility to all men. And something about speaking that word, it echoes in my heart. I tell you, you just got to get this. You've got to download it, but you've got to use it. And I like what you say. You marinate in it, in a sense. You know, sometimes I hear myself and these verses just pop out and I think, I didn't even think that. It just popped out. Why? Because speaking the word marinates in the word and the promise comes out and transforms the problem. The Word is full of encouragement, peace, and eternal promises. Speak words of peace, health, protection, and blessings into your life and the lives of your friends and family. Marilyn and Sarah speak biblical confessions over their lives every day, and now you can too. For your gift of $20 or more, we want to bless you with Marilyn and Sarah's Declare Today CD, which includes the confessions they declare daily. God's Word is filled with wonderful promises. And when you confess them over your life, you agree with the Word and the blessings take hold. You'll also receive God's Promises for Your Every Need Deluxe Edition, which offers encouragement straight from the Bible, wrapped in a lovely leather-bound cover. This powerful book is full of promises that will help you overcome life's challenges. This resource topically arranges specific scriptures to offer you hope during difficult seasons. These two resources will anoint and encourage you. Discover and take hold of the power of the Word. Call or click today. Sarah and I are so excited to invite you to be a part of our team to Ireland and Scotland. Can you imagine? November the 1st through the 12th, 2014. Ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, Scotland. View the magnificent Irish cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean while driving up the western coast, visiting historic churches, castles, and the Ring of Kerry along the way. Mom, it's going to be really powerful. We get to go to Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh, and we totally want you to come with us. This will be a revolutionary trip for you. Not only do we get to see amazing things, but we also get to participate in ministry all along the trip. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you to come with us. We have a brochure for you and it will absolutely be one of the best trips you've ever taken. Come with us today to Scotland and Ireland. We're talking today about the power of God's Word and the power of declaring and confessing God's Word. And I love what it says in Psalms 119, verse 11. It says, Your Word I have treasured in my heart. Some versions say, hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. And that's what I see with God's Word when we begin to speak God's Word on a regular basis, making declarations. We see that God's Word starts to become hidden and treasured in our hearts. And when we treasure and honor it and, and hide that, 
then it becomes a reality, it turns into reality in our lives. And so, Mom, I know from growing up early on, um, this was some, one of the things that I remember sitting in Village Inn with you and Dad. Dad would read the newspaper and you'd go through your confessions <laughs> and, and uh, I'd have, you know, Reuben on, you know, what, ham and cheese on rye. Yeah. <laughs> that was breakfast, but I just remember it was kind of a lifestyle of that. And I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. You can download this as a free, free uh, confession card or declaration card. We'd love to get it to you. And Mom, you were talking about how you keep it on your phone, oh, yeah. which is awesome because oh, yeah. you can just put that, like, whip it out any time. Oh. You know, I can be on an airplane. I have to get up real early and ride there, and then I speak it, you know, while I'm riding there. And, you know, what I like about this is that the word quickens. Now, quickens is kind of an old word, but it means it brings life. So I learned early from my husband to speak the word about my womb because they told me I could never have a child. It was impossible that I had an inherited condition. My husband never received that. You know, he said, God can do all things. All, all things are possible with him, you know, if we believe in him. So he would speak that and he said, we will have our own child. Now from 26 to 36, we didn't have a baby. But at 36, something began to happen. So I went to a doctor and he said, what do you think is wrong? I said, I think I'm pregnant. He examined me. He said, you're not pregnant. It's impossible. He said, you're going through the change early. Well, I went home, had some more changes, had Sarah. But really, that was from your father speaking the promise. That wasn't from me. And see, you may say, I would love to have a child or my children would like to. Start saying all things are possible with God. Get this download this or get it, call us, we'd love to hear from you, and get these promises because as you speak them, it quickens you. Really, it brings life to you. I can get up sometimes and have jet lag. Oh, well, you know this story really well. Maybe you're 14 hours ahead over there and you think, oh, my head, and you speak the word and some way your head gets into gear. It gets into the supernatural. The biggest thing I would say about speaking the word is it makes you live in the supernatural. You cannot live in the supernatural without speaking the promise. And you know, Mom, I'm going to kind of throw you a fat pitch on this question. I'll do it. So I know you've been kind of memorizing, meditating through Hebrews 11. Yes. And that's a rich <laughs> chapter, Hall of Fame of Faith. You know, oh, all these yeah. gentlemen and women who right. were really uh, significant heroes. Do you see in that chapter and some of those individuals that, that are really applauded and, and heralded, right. recognized, do you see some of them as far as walking in faith and even uh, some of their lifestyles, do you see them saying things that are based on the Bible that are kind of declarations, confessions? Do you see in their lifestyle some examples of this? Well, Abraham, hmm. you know, when he was asked to sacrifice uh, Isaac, he believed that God could raise him from the dead. So he said that undoubtedly, you know, God can raise him from the dead. And it said, and he really, in a figure, received him from the dead. So it tells you people speaking promises and how the provision came to them. And it's, I want to say this, it's to people that sometimes we would say they were very weak in their circumstance, like Gideon, like Samson, these sure are not perfect people. And they speak the promise and get the most miraculous provisions. And I call it the Hall of Fame of Faith. Right now I'm in it, meditating on it. Years ago I memorized it, but I'm doing it again. And I mean, it's a hot spot in my day. I think when you get these promises and you start speaking them, and you may want to speak them more than one time in the day, you may want to get them on your phone like I do. I'm telling you, it's hot spots. You can be in a dark spot and speak God's promise and it can become a hot spot. Don't even think of not getting these. You must get them. And how do you get them? Call or get on the website and you can download them that way. Oh, absolutely. Another example, Mom, is in Rahab in Joshua chapter yes. 2. Because when you read Rahab, she, was, she wasn't necessarily Jewish, 
I mean, no. she lived in Jericho. No. She was Gentile. And the spies came and hung out. Supposedly, she was a prostitute. She definitely lived on the edge of mm -hmm. society and literally lived on the wall around Jericho. But when the spies came and they stayed in her home, it says in verse 11, this is what she said. And I think this is really powerful. When we heard of it, our hearts melted. This is Rahab talking to the spies. Our hearts melted and courage remained and no courage remained in any man any longer because of you. And so what she's saying here is when we heard it, our hearts melted. So she had heard the word of God. She had heard about the Israelites. She had heard how God had delivered them out of Egypt and how God had, you know, kept them in the last 40 years. She had heard that, but then it's not enough just to hear it. But what she says, she says, for the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. So what she heard, she spoke. Right. And because she spoke that, and she basically acknowledged that the God of the Jews is the real genuine God. And she made that declaration, that confession. And in essence, that's what saved her household is because she spoke the word. She spoke what she heard and combined it with faith. And so we see Rahab and Rahab wasn't like all schooled and trained. I mean, no. she didn't have a lot of Moses giving her kind of the, uh, you know, in, integrated lifestyle. This is what you do. You don't, no. I mean, this is a woman who takes hears the word of God, mixes faith and confesses it. And then you see the outcome for her. The entire city of Jericho falls. The walls are crushed, but her family is saved. Her and her household are saved. And it's basically because of her confession right here. So I just think you look back and you say, well, that's the New Testament, but this is an Old Testament Gentile example of a person who hears the word of God, mixes it with faith and speaks the word and sees amazing results in her life as well as in her family's life. So to hop on the phone, get on the website, download these declarations, these confessions. They're really powerful. It's the word of God. And we talked about this, Isaiah 11, uh, 55, 11, that God's word doesn't return void. It goes and accomplishes that to which it is sent. So I just encourage you, God's word is very alive, very active, very vibrant, and very effective to achieve what we need in our lives and what God wants to do in our lives. So hop on the phone, get on the website, download it, get on your phone, get on your tablet thing. All of those are great, great things. And coach your, coach your kids, coach maybe mm -hmm. your husband, some of your friends. You may not have any kids. You may not have a boyfriend. That's okay. You can start, start developing this lifestyle now. It's a fantastic lifestyle and it's the lifestyle of the impossible. And it's a great adventure and also great comfort, great counsel, great solace, great wisdom in our lives uh, to help us to just in daily practical hiding God's word in our hearts so that we don't sin against God. And Sarah, when you talk about Rahab, look at how the word produced a future. Sure. And that's very key for us because she gets in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Her whole lifestyle changed. She was a transformed woman. She married one of the spies. Only five women listed in the genealogy of Jesus, and she's in there. And see, when we start speaking the word, I believe we bring a future to our children. Hebrews 11 tells us that Joseph blessed his grandsons. It tells us that Isaac blessed Esau and Jacob concerning things to come, and they were blessed. And so we can speak promises for our children that could bring provision in their lives. And that's very important, the future power of speaking God's Word. God's Word is so powerful, it has life in it, it can go into the future. I mean, that's astounding to me. There are certain promises. I speak also for my grandchildren. And when I'm saying these promises, man, I'm including them. Every grandchild I have is included. You know, my children are included and I see some wonderful things happening. But even if I didn't, I know that word is providing a powerful future. You can provide a powerful future speaking God's word. Call in, you know, get on the website and do it now. The word is full of encouragement, peace, and eternal promises. Speak words of peace, health, protection, and blessings into your life and the lives of your friends and family. Marilyn and Sarah speak biblical confessions over their lives every day, and now you can too. For your gift of $20 or more, we want to bless you with Marilyn and Sarah's Declare Today CD, which includes the confessions they declare daily. 
God's Word is filled with wonderful promises, and when you confess them over your life, you agree with the Word and the blessings take hold. You'll also receive God's Promises for Your Every Need Deluxe Edition, which offers encouragement straight from the Bible, wrapped in a lovely leather-bound cover. This powerful book is full of promises that will help you overcome life's challenges. This resource topically arranges specific scriptures to offer you hope during difficult seasons. These two resources will anoint and encourage you. Discover and take hold of the power of the Word. Call or click today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Nightcare from Saving Moses. I'm really, really eager to share this with you. I was reading the other day about a very difficult situation. There's this little tiny guy, and he's kind of the side dude in his whole family, you know, kind of not quite ostracized, but put off to the sidelines, not very important, just kind of minimized. And this guy's name is David. David. He became the king of Israel. Samuel anointed him, and he had ama an amazing life. But he had a lot to overcome. And God helped David overcome many difficulties, many hardships. Interestingly enough, his dad, when you read about him in 1 Samuel, his dad, when Samuel came to anoint the next king, his dad didn't even consider David out of one of the eligible people right out of the gate. In fact, they had to call for him because Samuel said to him, don't you have any more sons? Oh, yeah, I got that shepherd kid, the youngest one. He's out. Yeah, we can bring him in. And Samuel anoints David, and it says in the midst of his brothers. Very next chapter is when David goes and fights against Goliath. Little tiny David, shepherd boy, fighting against a guy who's over eight feet tall, and he beats him overcoming obstacles, overcoming hardships. And maybe you're watching today and there's tremendous obstacles in front of you. Maybe you have Goliaths. Maybe you have family issues where they, they ostracize you or they kind of minimize you, put you off to the side. Maybe you have conflict in your family. David had conflict in his family, but God helped him to overcome all these things. Why don't you get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you to be, be an overcomer instead of being overcome. David could have sat down and kind of, you know, nursed his wounds. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, this is bad news. But he didn't because God in you is greater than any obstacle, greater than any giant, greater than any hardship. God can help you overcome today.